I would like to call to order the December regular meeting of the Denver Board of Education. Welcome everyone who's going to see here tonight. Um, our first item on the agenda is to approve the meeting agenda. So is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the meeting agenda with this change, where we change uh, swap 3A and 3D, putting the celebrations of excellence first and the board member comments for the for the reports and presentations. <coughs> Motion and a second. Um, all in favor of the motion is stated say aye. Aye. Um, all opposed, the motion passes. Um, we'll now move on to the reports and presentations and begin with our celebrations of excellence. But before we start, I'll just mention that um, Kate Graves, who uh, is on the board and uh, has this empty seat waiting for her, is on her way from Lexington. She has texted me, and so she'll be joining us at some point. She apologizes for being a few minutes late. So, with that, Ms. Snyder, would you like to be in? No, you'd like Ms. Ralston to be in. That works. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Ms. Ralston. I'm the way, from David High School. We have several groups that we would like to recognize tonight, and the first group that I want to talk about really needs no introduction. Um, they are a special group of young men. They are special on the athletic field and off of the athletic field. They led their teammates to the 2A state championship game where they were runner, runners up. And while I'm very proud of their accomplishments on the field and in the classroom, I'm most proud of the young men that they represent as role models. They are role models every day in our school. So I want to bring forth Isaiah Scott. I don't know if Isaiah's here. Jeremiah Wheat. And he had to work till six, so he's he may not be here yet. Ellison Stanfield. And Zach Napier. <laughs> Just on time, you are right on time. And I want to come on, I got one more first. And I want to bring up Coach Clay Clevenger, and I want to recognize him because he has an impact on the lives of these young men every day. And I want to say thank you to Coach also and to these young men for being leaders. that I could recognize. But the two that I, we have chosen tonight 
put in countless hours all the time. Um, the first one that I would like to recognize, she volunteers with the soccer team, the football team. Anytime we ask her to do anything, she always steps up. She even rides the pet bus every time we ask her. And let me tell you, that is not a fun job sometimes. <laughs> and I want to say a special heartfelt thank you to Sheila Walker. Every week, she brings food to school. She feeds kids that are not her own. She hangs posters at the football stadium. She climbs on ladders to take them down. She does it all. And I, I don't think we really know how valuable she is to the success of our football team. And that's Patsy Clevenger. Thompson. 
Everybody look at me for a minute. Thanks. Yeah, now. We had two parents to recognize this evening for their selfless efforts for the district, and out of those selfless efforts, they have chosen not to, <coughs> be to allow us to talk about them in their absence. Um, one of which is uh, Andrea Webster, who many of us know from lots of sponsorships at school levels, but this year we had the Junior Ads Running Club, where over, goodness, a whole bunch of students, I think it's over 100, where are my numbers at? Right, over 100 kids completed a, a marathon broken up over a series of days, and we wanted to thank her for organizing the event, for getting all the schools involved. We had across all three of our elementary schools, which was very cool. Um, so let's do a round of applause in her absence. Maybe she moves and she tells me to do it. The second is uh, Kathy Belcher. Kathy is our organizing body behind Dancing with Bamboo Stars. And this year we raised $20,000 for the schools. Middle school, Bay Middle School was the number one winner. Jenny Rogers was second. It's a huge event. The community comes out. The best thing about Dancing with the Danville Stars is that every single penny that is donated to it comes into the schools. There's not a single penny that goes out to any vendor that sells other stuff. So we appreciate that organization um, for doing so. So let's do a round of applause for her. <laughs> it gives us some bad luck, but to inspire continued efforts and volunteerism and support. Uh, we will unveil the brand new, which they would have received, and now we're not sure we'll give them to them. Um, the brand new cool Danville umbrellas, because it never rains. Um, so they will be receiving their umbrellas, um, which we will now be doing with that part too. So we're going to have a chance to talk about them, show off the umbrellas, and encourage other folks to pick up other opportunities, because you too can. And that concludes our recognitions for the evening. We're going to have to wait for Dr. Love to finish the umbrella because he's just right. coming on the next item on the agenda. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Thanks, everybody. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tonight we get to recognize, as part of the Superintendent's report, uh, our two board members who are rolling off uh, after many terms of service and support for the districts. So Lonnie and Kate, we want to have a chance to thank you guys for the years that you have put in. Um, it's a thankless job. Uh, it's chances to celebrate. The coolest thing is that you've gotten to see and will continue to see a taller elementary school that absolutely was driven by your efforts, thoughts, and ideas. It represents much more than just a structure, but all the kinds of instruction that will occur within that building, the kinds of energies that will be put forth by students and staff, the initiatives that will occur through there, will help you able to be traced back to your tenure as board members, which is really a pretty awesome thing that I think very few board members get to leave and have as part of that experience. So on behalf of all of us and students and staff and families, we want to thank you for your years of service. We got y'all cool stuff too. If you don't like it, you can trade it for an umbrella. You can watch all the time. So thank you guys for Thank you so much. as we roll into innovation report this is probably the best week you know, as far as the first semester to see performance represented in the district and all sorts of opportunities you've already seen the number one public school football team in 2a be recognized this evening so we've seen it on the field uh, our forensics team just recently placed third in a boone county tournament there are 16 teams excuse me placed first that would be wrong third of december came in first among 16 teams in boone county and then last weekend Placed second out of 26 teams in a tournament in Tennessee at WK, uh, in WKU, which had many of the top teams from Tennessee as well. Then we've had the Bates Middle School drama production, which was last week. It was uh, always good. Bates does a wonderful job of reminding us of the uh, sensibility and sensitivities that are necessary during a holiday season. Their production was great for, for showing us that. There was a Tolliver Winterfest last night, the Jenny Rogers concert tonight, Hawks' its concert tomorrow night, the uh, 
Bate Middle School and Danville High School band and choir concert will be Thursday night. So again, a great opportunity to see our students perform in many different ways, and many different opportunities across this week. Also, as it is the holiday season, if you're looking for ways to be of support, our Family Resource and Youth Service Centers are always open to donations. Um, not meaning to sound rude, but cash is always welcome because it gives them the greatest leverage to make sure that each individual family gets their needs met, whatever that may be. So should that be on your agenda as you look through your end of your finances and wish to make a contribution, uh, the Family Resource and Youth Service Centers are the best places to be able to make your charitable efforts. Now. So we want to thank you and announce that opportunity too. Now that concludes my reports. That's everything, right? Yep. But, um, so we are down to the board member comments. Uh, are there any comments from board members? Pretty much Keith covered it up. Well, <coughs> to say thank you to you two as well. Um, coming in here not having a clue as to what I was getting into. <laughs> um, it's just been fabulous to work with you all. And thank you for your leadership, you know, for what you've done over eight years, four years. Um, it is a lot, and so I just want to thank you. It's been fun to learn from you all, and um, you know, I just appreciate everything you've done for the board during your time here. So, thank you very much. That's what I want to echo what Paige said um, that I appreciate your all's leadership guidance. Um, you know, like Paige said, not knowing what kind of what to expect. I think you all have definitely kind of shown us the ropes and you know, been able to explain now this is why this is this way, you know. said nice things about me already um, <laughs> and everybody who's up here at the table um, we get to spend a lot of time together and um, I think everybody here knows kind of the give and take and, and what goes into it and the appreciation that goes with that um, I just want to take a minute to thank um, from people who are advocates for the Danville schools to teachers at all of our buildings over many years to um, our administrators many of whom are lucky enough to be in the room tonight. Um, I just appreciate your patience, your understanding, your um, what it takes to work with board members and to help us understand things that may be secondhand um, to you all and to just help us um, be the best we can be. And um, it's being um, involved in, this. a lot of people look at a school board member because you have to run for election as being a political thing. I never felt like that I was jumping into anything that was really about politics. Um, but I've always felt like that if there was a way to serve, um, that being involved with the local public school system was the way to do it. I just feel like that it really sets the tone for what the community wants to be, what it can be, um, helping kids to get the very best opportunities possible. There's, there's not a better way to spend um, a little bit of one's own time to be of service and to try to help out. So. Um, it's been an honor to do that, and I just appreciate everybody who has been a part of helping make that be a success for me and and be um, what it can be for the for the school district. So thanks to everybody um, here and who may be watching or who uh, I have a chance to see along the way who maybe was here five or six years ago, but there have been 
so many people do help, and I appreciate that. So, um, thanks again. Um, I guess that gets us through board member comments, unless anybody else has anything they want to add, um, and moves us on to um, item 3E, which is our personnel report, uh, which is just included in the um, meeting materials as an information item, and is there if anybody wants to take a look and if you have questions or whatever else, it's, the material is there. Um, next on our agenda is a reserve for the public. Um, is there anyone who's with us tonight who'd like to address the board? become an issue with you because as my children have been assaulted since the last time that I spoke I came to the October board meeting and Dr. Wood approached me and asked if um, we could talk he told me at that time that the board members could not do anything for me so I I allowed him to take the opportunity to set up a meeting. The meeting was with Dr. Look, Robin Kelly, Miss O'Connell, Judy Spellacy, my mother and I. The reason my mother attended was because Dr. Look and his staff have, have a tendency to speak to me as if I am a student and not a parent. I know I look young, but it's clear that I'm a parent. The last meeting that I attended with Robin and the former bus driver was a ended with no results. The meeting that we had was approximately one hour and 18 minutes. And during that time, I was interrupted numerous times. Uh, several times, Dr. Look tried to play each of the situations down to cutting into why when my children have been assaulted. I was moving in my seat and told I was being rude. Uh, I finally did interrupt because I had already been told that I was to hush or wait a minute, when all I was doing was moving in my seat, talking to me as if I was a child, I did interrupt and I told him I wasn't going to interrupt you, but you're not going to talk to me as if I'm a child. One of the concerns that we addressed was a comment that Ms. O'Connell said about me to my daughter in front of two other children. Excuse me, two other students. Miss O'Connell said that she would speak to Lexi. I felt Lexi deserved an apology. Uh, approximately about an hour of the meeting, it was apparent to my mother and I that the meeting had come to a standstill. <coughs> Dr. Look, Robin Kelly, Miss O'Connell, they clearly not come with any suggestions, anything positive to resolve these issues. My mother then suggested how to resolve the issues of some of my immediate concerns. Um, it was clear that Ms. Kelly triggers my daughter into a defense mode. And it was suggested that she step back and allow Ms. O'Connell to handle any future problems. Ms. O'Connell also stated that she would have lunch with my daughter in a week or so uh, strictly to establish a better relationship since making that comment to my daughter. Um, it was agreed. 
not just with Ms. O'Connell and Robin, but also Dr. Book. Everything that was agreed upon in that meeting had nothing has, has, has come to. Nothing. <coughs> the meeting, that, the last board meeting that I was at, I actually had to call state. I, I, I don't know if you all are aware of it, but I'm sick and tired of my children having another student put their hands on my children and he wants to make it out as well, cutting line, I mean, you, you made a, a really, I don't know, a great statement, Dr. Look. You said that last year, Bank Middle School was a very sore spot for me and my family. Yes, it was, because my son, my oldest son, was bullied forced to apologize, had his glasses broken, slammed into a locker. Yes, it has changed for the positive. Why? Because we have a new principal who actually does her job, who will not allow my children to be bullied and assaulted. My daughter was kicked in the back of the head. I guess, uh, and I uh, we asked several times what your policies are. And of course, his response is case by case. I just want to know when it's going to be taken serious. Since I know that last week you had a student in Jenny Rogers bring a knife, threaten another student, and he was only suspended for three days. But he came back two days after the suspension, and the teacher said, well, I'll be the nice teacher and allow you to be here. Uh, when is all means all going to actually mean that? And when are these rules going to apply like they should in the rule book, not just to the students, but to the staff? I mean, am I wasting my time coming and speaking with you all? Is Dr. Look right in what he said that you all can't do anything for me? Because if that's the case, then I want to stop wasting my time, stop wasting your time, and I'll seek further action elsewhere. Right. I think, you know, um, obviously we make this time available for anybody who has comments that they want to make to the board to come do that. There are roles that we play as board members um, and that we need to you know, honor and stay within those, but, you know, we, I mean, we'll have to look at your situation, kind of talk about what the right way for this to be handled is, and that obviously we want everybody, kids, parents, otherwise, to be, who are in our schools, to feel like that their concerns are being taken seriously, to feel like that they're being heard, to feel like that, that the rules are being followed, and everybody is having a positive, safe experience, and we want no less than that for you and for your kids, too, so. And I'll gladly uh, send you, I record, I have to record because every time Dr. Look seems to forget what he says, Robin seems to forget what she says. So I will personally email you the recording so that, and just that recording, but I have several others well, so that we'll you can hear. Ju just understand that, you know, that, that we have limits to what we can kind of delve into as well when it comes to personnel and individual situations and things like that. But I think that we've heard your concerns tonight and we did listen when you were here before um, and are sensitive to that and would not want those kinds of things that you're talking about to be things that happen to kids. So, you know, we'll, we have listened and we will do what we can and we appreciate your comments. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? My name is Vicki Blake. I am Amber's mother and the grandmother of the children she just discussed. My concern is, and my question for you is, does this book mean anything at all? You 
publish it, you hand it out to every student in the Danville school system. They're required to tear out the front page, sign it, and send it back. So does this book mean anything to the board? Well, of course it does. Well, in that case, on page 11, the parents have the right to send their students <coughs> to school with a positive attitude, an educational climate, to be granted access to all school records, to be informed and provided for in the school standards behavior about all school rules and regulations and the consequences of violations. On page 13, the teacher's responsibility states <coughs> to keep students safe from physical harm and verbal abuse. The principal's responsibility, again, to keep students safe and teachers safe from harm and verbal abuse. In the back, you have levels of misconduct. Clearly it states in level four that assault being, and you have it actually defined in here, <coughs> which is <coughs> hitting another student, kicking another student, pushing another student, but laying hands on another student to create physical harm. And there's protocol you have set out in this book that seems to not ever be followed. If another student hits a student or a teacher, why aren't these procedures followed? And if I hear one more time that it's case by case, and I actually have a comment, and it's on the recording that she has, that, that um, Dr. Look uh, made the comment, if I can find it real quick. I wrote it down. That it was, oh, here it is, not, not the impact that counts. Not the impact, but the punch. So whether or not the student meant to hit the, the student counts more than the fact that they hurt a student. When the middle school, when she's referring to last year when there was an incident, a teacher actually asked my grandson if it hurt. She didn't discipline the child at that point and the child turned around not five minutes later and hit him again in front of the teacher and the child was never disciplined. So my question to you is when do the rules apply? Because if all doesn't mean all you need to take my granddaughter's picture off that wall because she's up there. I really, I, I don't have a whole lot other to say other than please reread this book because case by case, in an assault situation, it states that the, uh, your police officer that works here should have been notified. Hitting someone in the public, if I hit you, I've assaulted you. Have I not? I have assaulted you. So if another student lays their hands on my grandchildren again, I can promise you we will press charges against that student. But your protocol states that you should have called, or the principal, and I think well, she was here, I don't know if she is anymore or not, but <coughs> none of this ever happens. There was an incident on the bus that a child was punched in the nose, his face was bloody, the kid got back on the bus, then hit my granddaughter, then hit my grandson, then hit my granddaughter again, and the child got an assigned seat. It clearly states here that they should be removed from the school immediately so that they're no longer a threat. That is a threat. So I would ask that you people reread this book and I do have an article here that was published on June 15th about the 
evaluation for Dr. Look. You have four categories. Not one time did he get the top category in his review. So if you look at it this way, he got two accomplished and the other five were developing. I don't know about you, but to me it clearly says that he needs improvement. Your principal at Jenny Rogers needs improvement. And if you want to evaluate and publish this in the paper, why don't you send out a survey to the parents and let them evaluate what they feel about the teachers and the principals and Dr. Look, and then make your evaluation. Because I know you made the comment in here that you thought he was exemplary and disagreed with the report. Well, on my dealings with him, I wouldn't have given him anything but growth required. He, he does speak to people in a very condescending way. We appreciate your comments tonight and your question about do we take what's in that book seriously, we do. And so, you know, with those concerns, we've heard those and we'll that's your standard answer, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to leave you with this one. If you don't get this bullying stop, because it's not just my grandchildren, I hear from all kinds of parents about it. They're just too afraid to speak up. But you're going to send these elementary kids to middle school and then to high school, and then we're going to be in the newspaper, and they're going to call us the second call by. Do something about this, because the next step is to go public with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to the board tonight? Um, all right. We will move on then in the agenda to um, minutes of previous meeting meetings. Uh, is there a motion? Make a motion to approve um, the eleven fourteen two thousand sixteen and the eleven twenty one two thousand sixteen meeting minutes as submitted. Second. Okay. Motion is second. All in favor of the motion is stated saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is the finance report. Is there a motion? Make a motion that we approve the finance report as submitted. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Mr. Dean, you want to give us some highlights there? Yes, sir. We uh, ended the month of October with a cash balance of uh, $5,216,000 and some change. Uh, during the month of November, uh, total receipts were $6,356,000 and change. Uh, total uh, claims that we paid out for the month were $1,207,000. Payroll for the month of November was $1,223,000. So total expenditures for the month were $2.429, almost $2.430 million. So we ended the month of November with a balance of $9,143,000 uh, and some change. Uh, if you can look down in the middle of your uh, financial statement there, you'll see how the, uh, the, the funds were broken down. Uh, the cash balance was broken down by fund. You'll see in the general fund we had $6,206,000. Uh, you can look down through there and see how the rest of them uh, shake out the, uh, the building cash uh, increased uh, significantly over October because of the transfer that we made of the uh, uh, tax collections for uh, uh, our bond and debt service uh, for the rest of the year into that account and so that's and our construction fund is down just a little bit we'll talk about that just here in a minute because we had some expenditures for the uh, bait uh, the final expenditures for the bait and the uh, hogs and roofing project so you can see how they're spread out there like I said at the end of uh, November 9,143,000 is a change at the bottom, you can see the uh, CD uh, activity through the uh, end of November. Uh, for November, we had a draw uh, for construction expenditures of just a little over $802,000. Uh, Year-to-date draw from our total bond issue of $4,680,000. So right now, at the end of November, the current CD balance was a little over $9.6 million. Uh, good thing is uh, year-to-date so far, our, our, to date on the uh, on the bond issue, we've earned uh, about sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in interest. It's going back into the. 
on the page two, you can see just a summary of the, uh, the general fund uh, receipts. Uh, just point out that uh, our tax collections are in full force right now. Uh, so far from the, uh, through October and uh, November, we've collected $4,665,000 in uh, property taxes. A uh, little bit behind the pace uh, where we were last year, uh, down $282,000 from where we were last year. Uh, we'll probably see some of that catch up in November before the uh, penalty phase kicks in. You can see uh, year to date uh, so far we've got uh, we've brought it's 11 million 135,000 uh, 859.96. On the uh, third page, the uh, expenditures uh, summary. Uh, you can see on there how it's broken down by function. Uh, year to date through November, we've spent uh, five million thirteen thousand dollars. Uh, compare that with uh, last year to date of five million three hundred sixty-nine thousand. So at this time, uh, from November, we're behind, we're under what we had expended uh, uh, in November of last year by three hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. All right, uh, we have a motion, a second, to accept the financial report. Are there any questions? In favor of the motion is headed say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda then is the payment of invoices. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the payment of invoices totaling $1,207,150. Second. Okay. Motion is second. Mr. Dean, you want to? Yes, sir. Uh, these are the claims that were listed <coughs> on the uh, financial statement. Just kind of hitting some of the highlights of the $1.2 million that was spent during the month of November. $802,685.96 was for the uh, Tolliver construction project. We also uh, paid out $150,224.93 for the bait and the hogs and roofing projects, which should uh, pretty much finish those projects up. We'll be filing the uh, uh, paperwork to close those projects out shortly. Uh, so total construction costs of about nine, just under $953,000 of that $1.27 million that we spent. Uh, some other things that uh, paid during the month, we had our audit. Uh, the audit fee of $12,300 is in here. Uh, also paid, uh, we had a payment of $21,414, you'll notice, for fiber and internet. And I'll just uh, relay this to you. We've been waiting on the E-rate and everything to come through, and it has come through, so uh, we'll be uh, rest of the year not having to pay any of those and actually we may end up be getting a credit for the amounts that we've already paid in through November of this year so we're going to be in a pretty good time as far as that goes. Uh, we had a debt service payment of $6,714. Uh, we also replaced a, a server uh, with our KETS money of $9,450 at the high school. Uh, with our Perkins grant uh, at the high school we purchased a 3D printer for about $2,400 so it's a few of the things that you'll notice if you'll go through there and see the, uh, the expenditures during the month. So uh, after you take out the construction and those few items that I mentioned, uh, we had utilities, food service, other costs for the month of $204,000. Okay. Any questions on that? We have a motion and a second to approve payment of invoices. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, that motion passes. Next on the agenda is the Wilderness Trace preschool contract. Is there a motion? I recommend that we make a motion to approve the contract with the Wilderness Trace Child Development Center for the 2016-17 school year. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is this? this would have been um, in general the better consent item, uh, but it got to us late. This is our actual contract with Wilderness Trace for how we make payments. It should have been to us in August, or at least before August. They just got it to us. We need this to sign so that we're able to transfer funds between sites. Any questions? Is this different than contracts in the past, or is this? No, it's the same contract. We, we redid the MOA last year in the spring, yeah. which was the overall arrangement. This is just the contract for how money moves from, from one to one okay. B, no change. Okay. okay. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second on this. All in favor of the motion is stated, say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Next on the agenda is the district facility plan. Um, is there a motion? I move that we approve the district facility plan. Second. Okay, we have a 
motion and second. Mr. McKenna, you want to? So this, this is the, the four-year plan that will get us through 2020. We're required by AD to <coughs> present a facilities plan that is good for four years, and that facilities plan is used to determine the need of the district, and then all the need of all the district goes into a big, big pot, and the legislature decides how much bonding capacity each school district will get, depending on how the finances look at the state for any given biennium. So, um, our overall need on the new facilities plan is 34 million, which includes um, a new. P1 center in Hogsett, not new, but a renovated Hogsett where we'd be adding classrooms, office space, uh, renovating kitchen, family resource room, multi purpose area. Jenny Rogers will become a board office, central office, and special programs building, which will require less renovation. Um, and then Daniel High School obviously will continue to be Daniel High, but it will continue to be Bay with all the improvements and renovations and maintenance that we need on those buildings so with that and some other projects throughout the district we come up with a total need of 34 million roughly and a couple of discretionary items with athletic facilities that we can't count in the need uh, to ask for bonding capacity but we need to have it on the facilities plan so I think it's a good plan um, the LPC <coughs> extremely hard and diligently in good faith there's a very good process and for those that, that Disagreed. I think all of us agreed that the process was was a, a good process and that it was done with good intentions and there were some strong feelings obviously from LPC members and community members. And we heard from all those folks and these decisions are tough. Some of the reasons were that those have been pushed off for so long is because they're difficult decisions. And so I think we're in a good place. The facilities plan is presented for your review and if you accept the facilities plan and want to move to public hearing. We have that scheduled for Thursday at 5.30. Uh, we can talk about that on the next agenda. Okay. Any questions for Mr. McKinney? All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the district facility plan as submitted. Um, all in favor of the motion is stated to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, so then we move to the next item. Um, <coughs> Was contingent on the positive vote on that, and that is uh, the public hearing date. So, is there a motion on that? I make a motion to approve um, to conduct a public hearing at Daniel High School Library on December 15th at 5 30 to hear input on the district facility plan. Second. Okay, there are a motion and a second on that. Um, so the, the board's required. Um, it's kind of a joint effort from KDE and the board to have a public hearing. Uh, a little more formal process than the public forums. We'll have a hearing officer to be recorded. Um, all members of the public share, stakeholders are welcome to come. There will be no give and take. This is a time for community members to, for staff members or parents or whoever is so inclined to come and talk about the facilities plan. So, there's no give and take here. It's just you record your comments orally or written, and the hearing officer accepts those, and then we'll uh, put those in a report for the board to consider. Okay. Any questions? I have one question about that, which is just so officially that public hearing is that a board meeting or is that just? It a is not a board, board meeting. Orders. It's a board. Of, you you all have the board members. In, in my experiences with them in the past have not been there yeah. so it is not a board meeting it is a hearing that you all um, sanction right. and name a hearing officer for okay and and the hearing officer will put together a report for your all's consideration but it is not a board meeting right. it, it used to be kde used to run it it was a but when they got a little bit low on staff they kind of turned this over to the board but it's a kind of a joint it is not kind of it is a joint hearing for KDE and the local board of education. Right. But it's not, I just want to it is not a board meeting. about the fact that it's not, it is not a board meeting. Board meeting. Yeah. And, and we've never, a, that's, a, right. that's a right. hearing that is required, it's public, that is formal in nature and that we trigger that. That's correct. Okay. 
All right, so a motion and a second um, to um, conduct a public hearing. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion to stay and say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. Um, so then we move on to the next item, which is um, designating a hearing officer. Uh, is there a motion? Make a motion to approve um, Tim Lucas to serve as the hearing officer. Great. He works, he's been on work at He works at KDE and facility or has. He's back doing a stint there now. He's worked there forever, so he's really perfectly <coughs> knowledgeable about what it should take. So he's, his willingness to do it's very beneficial for the district. Okay. Any questions? We have a motion and a second. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. To approve the hearing officer, all in favor of the motion and stated say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda then is a um, need to call a special meeting um, after the public hearing. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the special call of meeting on December 16th at 2.30 p.m. at Dable School's central office for the purpose of considering sending the DFE. <coughs> second. Okay. Do you have a motion and a second on that? Again. Just part of the process, right? Part of the process. We'll have to, if, if it'll be for consideration, um, I think we'll be able to get board members the hearing report before that day for y'all to consider it. So, obviously, we won't consider it officially until the board meeting, but you'll be able to look over the hearing report before, the, before that day. And I'll just say that I'd like to thank all the LPC members that served on the uh, local planning committee. Another, another thankless job. The folks got, it's very intense, obviously, when you start uh, talking about where kiddos are going to go to school and what schools are going to be used for what purpose. So I'd like to thank all those people who served and the effort they gave to do the best job that they thought was in the points, best. Points started on number. Excuse me? They should get points toward a number. Well, yeah, not, we can't, we're not going to give them a number yet, but they can start. No, no, up no, no, no. Thank you. Serving on the LPC for nine months doesn't get you an umbrella. I don't think you want to <laughs> I just go by and I have something. <laughs> okay. yeah. It's easier to ways to get one. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion and a second to um, call a special meeting on December 16th at 2.30. Uh, All in favor of the motion is stated say aye. 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 All opposed? So that motion passes. Um, so now we are on to the revised Comprehensive District Improvement Plan. Is there a motion? <coughs> I made a motion. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the revised Comprehensive District Improvement Plan. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Ms. Spells, you look like you're eager to tell us about this. I am so eager to tell you about this. I'll be here. Even color coded it for you, my All elementary. Right came out. Um, <laughs> last Monday evening, you heard from each of the principals um, on the school improvement plans. Um, the district improvement plan, what uh, Mr. Smith and I and um, others have, uh, what we do is look at the school's improvement plan, look at the district plans, um, look at the innovation plan, and put together um, what we make up of the comprehensive uh, district improvement plan. Attached to your sheet, behind the color sheet, is the, um, the C-dip, is what we call it. You will not find the innovation plan in there because that is entered into uh, a different section. The state tells us several things that we have to include in the school plans and the district plans. Um, some of those are um, when we've got to set goals for combined reading and math for our K-Prep scores of improving those at each of the levels. We have to put a graduation uh, rate in at the high school, college, and career readiness. Um, we're applicable, how we're going to close the achievement gap, next generation professors, <coughs> teachers, and principals, which include tele-survey and um, the evaluation system for TGS. So those are the goals that the state tells us we have to put in our uh, school plans and the district plans. So what you have in front of you with the color coding 
is the dist uh, are the district goals have nine uh, main goals, <coughs> and then each of the schools have listed out the abbreviation uh, abbreviated form of their goals. And you can see from the color coding how they tie in. If it's purple, um, it has to do with the uh, teacher improvement and the certified uh, evaluation programming. If you look, glance through there, each of the schools have um, something written in that manner. If they don't, we pick it up as a district. Um, where they have in blue with the combined reading and math scores uh, with, with the KPREP, how they're going to improve on those scores. They have their action plan that they presented last week. Um, if you glance at the improvement plan, we go into greater detail of what we're going to do with the district to support their uh, programs and plans. Any questions on that? Well, Mr. Smith, if I can answer. Well, I just want to say you guys spent an awful lot of time good information. We always had good data to help support all this. It's a lot of work and uh, as I always say, we're moving forward and don't look back. So thank you all for all the work to all the principals too. Any other questions? Bad time reading, I think, for a yes. lot of people here. So Exciting. Yeah. There may be questions uh, <laughs> upcoming. Okay, and, and like I said, there are other pieces to this, like you know, the executive summary, um, the equity, equity plan, that's where the innovation plan falls in. Um, so those, each of the sections are under the district system. All right. Anything else on that, anybody? All right, thank you all. Thank you. All right, so uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the um, Comprehensive District Improvement Plan is submitted. Um, all in favor of the motion is that it's a aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is staffing. Uh, is there a motion? I'll do it. I make a motion that we approve of the staffing plan as submitted. Second. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second, and there's one lonely item on the handout. That's how right. I saw it. So, so Hawks, it's a uh, half <coughs> point five hundred veterans position funded through their Title One funds. Okay. Any questions on that? Anybody? All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the staffing changes as submitted. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move we accept the consent agenda uh, as stated without discussion. Second. Okay. All in favor of the motion is stated say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is an executive session. We have no need for an executive session tonight. So the final item is uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. All right. All in favor of the motion is stated say aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. My kids really want me to drop.